In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, I'd like to read this verse of Scripture. I've got the New King James here. Galatians 5, 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Stand free, stand fast, stand firm in the liberty by which Jesus Christ has set us free. I want to tell you, we have been set free by Jesus Christ. Praise God. And that's what I want to preach about today. We're set free, but for a purpose. We're not set free so that we can go back in bondage. That would be a travesty. We're set free to be free. And that's what I'm preaching about here this morning. Set free to be free. We have been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ in order that we should be free from the sin of the world around us and live a new life. We have been redeemed, the Bible says. Redemption is a beautiful analogy. It comes from the slave market. Slavery was universal in ancient times. The Roman Empire basically depended upon slavery as part of its economic system. It wasn't slavery like we know of in America of one race to another race, but people of all races could become slaves. They could be, become slaves through conquest. They could become slaves through going in debt and selling themselves or their family into slavery. And so the slave was indistinguishable from anyone else except the slave was in bondage and had to work for a master. Some masters were relatively, uh, you might say, kind. Others were cruel. Uh, a slave could be executed, a slave could be punished, severely beaten, tortured, and there was no legal consequence. The slave was not considered to have any human rights. And so, redemption is the analogy of a slave market. Here is a man standing in the market, stripped of his clothing, inspected by the buyers. They could look at him, poke him, to ask him to do whatever they want to decide whether they wanted to buy this man or how much they wanted to pay for him. No human rights, no human dignity, no future. But then somebody says, I'll pay the price. Someone pays the price and then says, you're free to go. Pick up your clothes, take off the chains. How long do I have to serve you? You don't have to serve me at all. You're free to go. You have been redeemed. The debt is paid. You are a free man. That's what Jesus Christ did for us. When he died for our sins on the cross, he, with his blood, paid the price for our sins, life for life. And we, bound in the slave market, have been set free. But it would be the most foolish thing in the world if we would go into bondage again. If we would sell ourselves into slavery and say, come on, put the chains back on me. I'm going to serve the rest of my life for you as a slave. How crazy that would be when Jesus Christ has set us free that we would go back to bondage to anyone else. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, stand fast, stand firm in the liberty in which Jesus Christ has given you. Don't be tangled up again in the yoke of bondage. Don't be tied up into the bondage of slavery. Don't let anybody else make you a slave. That's a powerful motivator for holiness. People misunderstand holiness. When we live a holy life, it's not that we think we're better than everybody else. It's not that we think we can earn our way to heaven. It's not that we think if we live so strict and go by as many rules as possible that somehow we're a better person. No, you're missing the point. Here's the point. We were slaves. Jesus Christ set us free. The last thing we ever want to do is get tied up again. We were in prison. 
Jesus Christ opened the doors of the prison and let us go free. The last thing we want to do is kick ourselves back into prison for the rest of our lives. The reason why we don't want to smoke and drink is we don't want to be tangled in the bondage of physical addiction. It has nothing to do with being better than anybody else. It has nothing to do by following rules and regulations. It has nothing to do with denying fun and entertainment. It has everything to do with I'm a free man. I never want to go back to slavery again. Whether it be the slavery of physical addiction or sexual immorality or bound by materialism and greed, the people of this world, they may not be in chains, but they live their whole life chained to their lust, to their desire, and they try to get ahead by tearing other people down, and they spend their time, their money, their energy bound by these things that drive them. But we have been set free. We don't have to live that kind of life anymore. We don't have to follow that pattern anymore because we have been set free. We're free. Don't let envy or jealousy or prejudice or hatred or bitterness or pride or lust or anything else make you a slave again. Don't be a victim of the devil. Don't be a victim of other people. Don't be a victim of your own fleshly desire. You've been set free. Stand in the liberty by which Jesus Christ has set you free. You see, when Jesus redeems us, it covers our past, our present, our future. Now, we human beings can't do anything about our past. There's this little saying, no, you're crying over spilt milk. Think about it. If you've got a carton or a jug of milk that's still on the ground, there's no way you can scrape it off the dirt, put it back in the bottle, and drink it. No, you're crying over spilt milk. That's our life. Every single one of us, from the first time we were to the faithful thing, if we're honest, look back at our past, there are things we regret. There are things we know we did wrong. By our own conscience, even if we don't believe in the Bible, there's some things we know we shouldn't have done. And there's nothing we can do about it. Even if we live a perfect life from now to the day we die, we can't change our past. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is so powerful, you can go back and change your past. Because the Bible says Jesus will justify you. That means he declares you to be righteous. He declares that you are no longer a sinner, but you are a saint. You are a child of God. That you now can inherit all the promises of God, just as if you had never sinned. It's like a prisoner, not merely someone who serves his time and paid his debt to society, but in the record is still there. But it's like someone who's pardoned. He's treated just as if he never committed the crime. He's treated just as if he never had a record. Jesus Christ can change our past. Now, some, some have gone through Alcoholics Anonymous, and I appreciate the good work that they do. This illustration is not meant to condemn them, but it's to show the best that humans can do is not as good as what God can do. Because Alcoholics Anonymous, you go to these meetings, and they encourage you to keep going for the rest of your life. And in the meeting, you say, I'm John, I'm David, I am an alcoholic. You're supposed to confess that to remind yourself that if you've been sober for one year or 20 years, there still is the temptation. There still is the old nature. There still is the addiction lurking within your system. And if you ever lose sight of that, you can slip and go right back to where you started from. That's true. But the best humans can do is say, this is my problem. But as a Christian, yes, we still have that ability to stumble and fall and go back to where we came from. That's true. But we can change our thinking and we can change our identity so that we can say, I used to be an alcoholic but I'm not anymore. I used to be a liar, but I'm not anymore. 
I used to be a hateful, prejudiced person, but I'm not anymore. I used to be a fornicator, but I'm not anymore. I used to be addicted, but I'm not anymore. I have a new identity in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ has set me free. Why would I want to go back into bondage? Why would I want to go back to what I used to be? I'm not that person any longer. I'm set free by the power of God. Set free to be free. Don't become tangled up in the old life of sin. Don't become a slave again. Don't use your liberty back. You go back to Galatians 5, where I read down to verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So, Here's how we can lose that liberty. If we take the liberty that God has given us and we use it to serve our own life, we'll end up right back where we started from. So, if you're a business person, you, in your past life, you lied, you cheated, you, you stole, you put other people down to get ahead, you cut corners, and so maybe you were successful, or maybe you crashed. But either way, you realize you were wrong. You came to God, you repented, you were saved, you were delivered. So now you have different business practices. Now you keep your word. Now, even if somebody gets advantage of you, you don't cheat, you don't steal, you trust God. But if we're not careful, we can come into church and the pastor asks us to lead a certain program. And we say, I'm going to be successful. And if we're not careful, we can use those same tactics of the world in the church. What's the point of that? You are set free from that. Don't go back to the old lifestyle. Don't go back to the old attitudes. Don't go back to the old habits. Don't serve your lust, but by love, serve one another. Here's how we remain free. Don't serve yourself. Serve others. Don't serve your lust. Serve the needs of the people of God and the needs of the community. When you start serving others, then you can put yourself in the right perspective. Serve God, serve others. That's how we can be free. It, there's a passage of scripture in Second Second Peter chapter two that talks about. And for the sake of time, I'll just briefly allude to this, but it says. In 2 Peter chapter 2, that there's some false teachers that will come. And they have a tactic that they will entice you with freedom. You follow our teaching, don't listen to the pastor. Don't, don't, you don't have to be technically following the Bible. That's kind of old and outdated. Uh, you know, don't, don't, don't follow any rules or regulations. Don't pursue holiness because that's bondage. So they take our freedom and they make it sound like bondage. You mean you go to that church every week? You mean you pay 10% of your income to that church? You mean you don't go out and party and get drunk anymore? You mean this? You mean that? What bondage? And they say, well, we have a better way. You can be a Christian. You don't have to worry about all those things. You can be really free. But notice what they're doing. What's our freedom? They say is bondage. We don't come to church because we're slaves. We come to church because we feel the presence of God. Because we receive strength and power to live the rest of the week. Because we have fellowship with godly people who cause us to excel. Coming to church is not bondage, that's free. We give our tithes and honor to the Lord, and we've learned that 90% with His blessing goes further than 100% without His blessing. Plus, we're no longer fulfilling our selfish lust, we save a lot more than 10% just right there. We come out ahead. We have more money in the bank when we serve God. And so what they say is bondage is actually freedom. But then what they claim is freedom, well, follow this. Indulge in this. Ignore this. That actually turns around to bondage. That's what this world tries to do. It inverts. And so if you read Second Peter 2, for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in earth. 
while they promised them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him also he is brought into bondage. Have you noticed, and I don't want to blame, or don't want to make a blanket criticism, but some leading churches that build rapidly on this idea of prosperity and success, don't worry about being accountable to anyone, don't worry about living a holy life, and they entice thousands of people. And at the end of the story is their leader, you find out, is in gross immorality or making millions of dollars off these poor people paying your time. This is exactly what the Bible says. They promise you liberty, but they're actually bringing you back into bondage. And then when the truth is known, they themselves are corrupt and in bondage. And that's why they're doing what they do. I'm just challenging us today. We have been set free. Let God that liberty. And if you read the rest of Galatians, you can follow the works of the flesh in which case you'll die. Or you can follow the the Spirit, in case you'll bear the fruit of the Spirit. The bottom line, it says, crucify the flesh and walk in the Spirit. If we receive the Spirit, he said, walk in the Spirit. So I'm here to tell you, you're at the right place and the right time. We preach that everyone can be set free. Everyone can be forgiven of sin. Everyone can be redeemed out of spiritual bondage. Everyone can be justified, treated as if they never sinned. If you repent of your sins, God will accept you right there. We'll baptize you in Jesus' name so that your sins will be washed away. Your record will be clean. You can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is God's Spirit to come inside to give you power to live a holy life. And from there, you just got to walk in the Spirit. If you stumble and fall, don't stay down. But ask God to forgive you, get back up, and be renewed in the Spirit. And keep going. Keep walking in the Spirit. Stand firm against error. And keep moving forward in the Spirit. And you're going to make it. Let's stand together right now. Set free to be free. Remember that. We're set free to be free. Don't use your liberty to satisfy your fleshly desire. Don't serve your lust, but serve people. Serve the Lord. Serve the church. Serve the kingdom. And just keep walking in the Spirit. When temptations come, say no to the flesh and yes to the Spirit. When teachers come with nice sounding words that would try to twist what the commitments you've already made, just close your ears to them and listen to the voice of the Spirit. Keep listening to the voice of the Spirit. Keep coming to church. Keep hearing the preaching and teaching of the Word. Keep responding to the Word. And you're going to make it. You've been set free. Don't let anybody tie you up. Oh, I feel a confirmation of the Holy Ghost here right now. There's a wonderful presence of God. Can we worship the Lord together? Can we worship Him? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. Thank you, Lord, for liberty. With your eyes closed, let's just take a moment to focus on the Lord. If there's somebody here today that you need to participate in that freedom that I preached about, would you like to come right now? If you're not serving the Lord, if you haven't really given your heart to God, please come to the front and kneel or stand. Even if you've already made a start, but you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, God's Spirit to dwell inside of you. I invite you to come right now. In a few minutes of time, of repentance and prayer, you can receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Would you like to come? Is there someone here today you're struggling? We all struggle at some time, whether it be with temptation or whether it be with attitude, whether it be with encouragement. If you need a touch from God, why don't you come? God has given us freedom, but we've got to claim it. Freedom is not free. We've got to claim it. We've got to believe it. Hallelujah. We've got to accept it. We've got to apply it. Would you like to come? As many as would like to come this morning. If you need encouragement, renewal, healing, deliverance, if you need the Holy Ghost, I'd like you to come. I'd like for others to come and let us pray with these who are coming. We're set free. 
But we've got to walk in that liberty. We've got to claim it. We've got to stand on it. We've got to believe it. We've got to follow it. Let's praise the Lord together as we conclude this service as the Savior's Savior. Let's rejoice in our freedom. We have to identify what a Christian is, what a Christian truly really is. Now, if I were to ask you, hey, brother or sister, what is a Christian or what does the word Christian mean? I'm not going to ask you because I'm afraid you might tell me it means Christ-like. If you tell me the word Christian means Christ-like, all that simply means is you never looked it up. You didn't look in the dictionary or the lexicon. And my mama taught Susie, my sister and I, don't use words you haven't looked up because you might be using the word wrong. So the word Christian does not mean Christ-like. On page 672, column 1, paragraph 3 of the Greek-English lexicon of New Testament words by Joseph Henry Thayer, he said the word Christian is from the Greek word Christianos and it means follower and worshiper of Jesus Christ. A Christian is somebody who follows and worships Jesus because in reality we don't know nobody just like Jesus. Jesus Christ has never been duplicated and never been replicated. A follower and a worshiper of Jesus is a Christian. So the Bible says in Matthew 4 and 10, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. You serve the God that you worship. I can hang out with anybody. That's why Evangelist Green, it was a treat to hang out with you. I can hang out with anybody 20 minutes. I will tell you who your God is because you serve the gods you worship. If you worship money, you serve your business or your job or whatever you do to get money. If you worship fashion, you serve clothes. If you worship education, you serve degrees. If you worship knowledge, you serve science. If you worship your body, you serve exercise. If you worship your belly, you serve food. If you worship lust, you serve sex. If you worship getting high, you serve alcohol. If you worship yourself, you serve pride. If you worship sin, you serve the devil. Let me admonish you, worship God and serve Jesus. Jesus is the only legitimate object of worship in the entire world. Though our sins are scarlet, you have made us white as snow. Though our sins are scarlet, you have made us white as snow.